Oh, what a morning it's been already. I've only been here 20 minutes or so. Let me start by saying, this is not going to improve your photography or make you popular on social media. No, this is purely the rules I follow to survive on social media, as more and more posts are created every second of every day. Has this diluted the impact for photographers on social media? Or are we all heading for the same dead end? I see so many Instagram accounts and YouTube channels fail, sometimes even close for good, never to be seen again. And that's all because creators thought they were failing or doing something wrong. Hopefully the seven rules that I follow will help you avoid the traps that other photographers, creators seem to have fallen into. So I've come today to a place called St. Helens and just on the outskirts of St. Helens is this uh, statue, it's called The Dream. I've shot from here a couple of times in the past, I've done a couple of vlogs from here and it's dead handy and sort of quite unique as well. So it's always a good place to come to when you need to talk. Oh, what a glorious morning. So today is going to be the hottest day of the year. I don't know why I'm wearing the fleece. I'm already starting to uh, to warm up and it's, uh, well, it's only 20 past five. So the happiest I've ever been in my photography is when I first started. I used to go out with my Nikon D3200, take a load of images, process them through on Lightroom and post them onto, uh, onto Twitter, a very small Twitter account I had since deleted. But what I found, I couldn't help to race home just to have a look at these images, to run them through processing just to see what I got. Now they weren't very good images at all, but that was the start of my creative flow. And with it came an excitement, something that I've probably lost over the years. That motorway is getting really loud. We've got the M62 just uh, just on the other side of these trees here. Yeah, morning traffic starting to build up. So fast forward six years, I've got Instagram, Facebook, and now YouTube. I mean, you know that because you're actually watching the channel now. So how do I survive as a creator, as a photographer on YouTube with the other social medias? Let me explain. So when I started YouTube, I didn't want to fall into the trap that so many seem to have done. So I created myself seven rules. It's actually extended to eight. There's a bonus one at the end. And the pure reason for these rules is I wanted to keep myself grounded. I wanted to be able to create something because I enjoyed it. So let's run through these seven rules that have made me survive over the past, what, three years now? <laughs> so rule one, and that's think. So throughout the week, I will carve out three hours to strategize, read, and explore my photography and video. It also helps me if I put it on paper. When I have the good ideas, I write them down so I can come back to them at a later date. If I don't write them down, they're out of my head and gone forever. That sun's getting warmer and warmer. I'm gonna have to, uh, yeah, open up a bit. Rule number two, and that's curate and download. After each shoot, I'll spend between 15 minutes and half an hour just writing about the location and, and how I felt on the day. I'll rank it on distance to travel, what the location has to offer, is it worth returning, is it an AM shoot, PM shoot, how busy does it get, things like that. And what that does, it gives me time to actually recap on what the video is all about in order to edit it in a way I can deliver it onto YouTube. This also gives me time to critique my work as well as I'm running through the post-processing and the editing, always thinking what could I have done better. Rule number three, and that's a simplify. This is my favourite. This is the one that I will stick to all the time. And the reason why I feel that this one's important is because video and photography have to be simple. The viewer has to understand what message you're trying to get across. Let the viewer see the image. Let them understand what the image is about and then let them have time to explore what else is in the image. That's the process that I always follow whenever I take my images. And the same can be said for video. You've got to have your message quite clear. Yes, I do break this rule sometimes by sort of waffling on, going on a tangent, but uh, yeah, I always have to rein myself in and try and stick to simplifying everything I do. So moving on to number four, and that's trends. I think it's key to understand what is trendy, what is moving within the world of social media. But I also think it's key when not to follow it. I think the most prominent one at the moment is YouTube Shorts. Everybody seems to be jumping on the bandwagon to create short videos. Now I've reviewed this and this is something that I've thought about long and hard. And every time I ask myself, will my channel benefit from, from YouTube Shorts? The answer is no. I can't think how I would actually fit them in. And I strongly believe it would actually take away from my channel. 
Now I might be wrong about this, but let me know in the comments if you enjoy watching YouTube Shorts and whether the world of photography actually needs it. Ah, you see, but Peter McKinnon said it's good and it's a good way to get people to see your channel. But the problem with people like Peter McKinnon, as great as he is, he has over 6 million subscribers. He could post a video on something like a mobile generator. Oh, he has. How many views did it get? Over 200,000 in a week. Yeah. But Peter McKinnon's shorts are very interesting. If you actually watch them, they're all about fantastic coffee machines, new inventions that have been brought up, some oldie worldy stuff. And uh, yeah, I just don't see where I can sort of fit that sort of trend into my videos. Reviewing Nerf guns, coffee machines and trendy gear. I just don't have access to that. So for now, I won't be doing it. And don't even get me started on NFTs. Never done them myself, but I've not heard a positive word from any photographer about them. So rule number five, and that's move on quickly. Don't dwell on your thoughts. If you've made mistakes, if you come out to a certain location, it's not worked, you've gone to a particular pho uh, photographer shoot and all the images have come back a bit bleh, we've all done it, the weather conditions haven't been right, you've not been right, just don't dwell, move on. The most successful people in life don't dwell, they move on. And as photographers, I think it's key for us to do that as well. So rule number six, and that's why. Now please don't take this the wrong way. But the reason why I do these videos is not because of you guys. You guys are just a byproduct of actually posting out on the internet. The real reason why I create these videos is because I love making videos. I love creating, I love coming out to locations like this and, and making these silly little vlogs. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate every single view, every single subscriber, like, comment, you name it. Whatever interaction you have with these videos, I absolutely love it. And it's really, really appreciated. But rule number six is the one I have to remind myself of constantly, is why. But the why is the important thing, and I think a lot of people should sort of stand back and actually ask themselves the same question. Why do they do it? Which brings us on to rule number seven, and that's use social media for its intention and in return enjoy posting your images don't worry about the algorithms don't worry about your likes your dislikes your comments anything like that just post it for you and the love of your photography the rest will come naturally what i tend to do with facebook and instagram is upload and forget about it i don't bother looking seeing how many likes i've got how many comments etc because they're irrelevant if i like the image i'll post it it's as simple as that so that sums up the seven rules that i originally started with but there is one more and this one's a little controversial, and that is avoiding the parasites. What do I mean about avoiding these parasites? Well, there's a couple of types that I've come across. The first type being the type of person that when they leave a comment, they can't help but promote themselves. The sort of person that comments with just their own intentions in mind. I've been to that location, I've shot from there, but never actually praise you. Really, I don't entertain these people one bit. But the second type of parasite is the worst. That's the person that will copy your ideas, try and get as much information out of you as possible to go out and almost take the identical shots. They may even come out and shoot with you pretending to be friends, but all they're after is information on how they can improve their own photography. And then once they're done with you, they'll move on to the last person. They just sort of latch onto people as they go along, leaving this path of just feeling used. This has happened to me a number of times. And every time it happens, I always think, I'm not gonna let that happen again. And it does, and it will. But we just need to be mindful of these people. If we have our suspicions that somebody's just taking our ideas, sort of taking our creativity and using it for their own, their own gains, it's not on. And when I started photography and YouTube, I never thought that would be an issue and I'd ever have to put this in as one of my rules. But it's quickly becoming the most prominent. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you've managed to take something away from it. Like I say, I use a lot of this, a lot of these rules in my personal life as well, not just creating video or doing photography. And I hope you can manage to use these rules as well. When you're feeling a little bit pressured, when you're feeling a little bit unloved with social media and the way that the whole social media algorithms work and things like that, just review back on this video and just sort of see what you can use. You never know, it might help. So there we have it. They're my rules that I follow through to survive social media in this modern world. Who'd have thought we'd actually have to have rules to get through social media? But certainly as more and more YouTube channels start to just fade away and get deleted, it's such a shame because people have put so much work into this. And I can completely get the pressures of social media. You've just got to use it for what it's there for. Don't get any emotional attachment to it. For every bad person that's on there trying to bring you down, 
fighting the algorithm, things like that. There's a, hundreds of good people. They're there to offer support, friendship and encouragement. What I certainly hope is that this video hasn't come across negative. Yes, the thing about the parasites, yeah, it's sort of borderline, but I don't want this to be a negative thing. I want you to be able to use this. And if you are feeling down with it, if you're thinking about giving up, don't. Ask yourself the question, why are you doing it? It should help. So from the dream in St. Helens, it's probably time to say goodbye. I'm gonna to have to go home now, try and get some sleep. And uh, I think it's gonna be 29 degrees today. How the heck am I gonna sleep in this? I'm back in work tonight and uh, yeah, you've got to feel sorry for, uh, for night shift workers that, uh, that have to sleep through the summer. It's absolutely horrendous. Anyway, enough moaning. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. It'd be great to have you on board of the channel. Normally the videos are slightly different than this. And if you manage to take something away from this, leave a note in the comments. Let me know who you are, where you're from, and uh, yeah, what you managed to take away. It'd be really, uh, really useful to, to know that people can use this. So from the dream, time to say goodbye. Take care, all the best. New video out very, very soon. Bye-bye now.